Today we're going to be diving into what is arguably one of the most disturbing and hidden facilities that Oni have available for enemies of the UNSC. This place is so secret, people don't even know of it in order to be scared of it. So relax back, I've got this, we'll take it from here. The Midnight Facility is the name of a top secret prison facility operated by the Office of Naval Intelligence. It was intended to house high profile political prisoners who the organisation preferred to make disappear rather than execute or rehabilitate and the facility was located in an asteroid field. There are a number of penitentiaries that are preceded by their reputation and just mentioning the name would strike fear in the hearts of people, both within the UNSC and its enemies. The Midnight Facility wasn't one of them. Midnight wasn't about reforming criminals, it was just about making them disappear. Now there were a number of notable detainees within the facility. 2553, Alo Sakuba, whose codename was Denver within Oni, was the former Vice Minister of Abnegation, which was a department of the Religious Affairs Branch within the Covenant. Abnegation, if you don't know, deals with ideological control and enforcement, along with exegetics, which is the understanding of scriptures, uh, applied hermeneutics, which is the theory and methodology of interpretation, so kind of getting those scriptures and understanding what they're saying and how to interpret those into a modern culture and philology which is the study of languages within written and oral sources. Now Alo Sakuba actually survived the flood infestation of high charity in Halo 2. He was captured during an attempt to travel to a Covenant Harbour. On his way to the harbour, he accessed a terminal and claimed to have heard Cortana's screams coming from High Charity itself, which, as we all know, Cortana was on High Charity when the Gravemind took over. Now, it was at this point that he surmised that she was succumbing to the Logic Plague, or at the very least, was being accelerated towards rampancy, which is what I believe happened between Halo 2 and 3. Anyway, Alo Sakuba later managed to escape, taking a small frigate and a minimal amount of rations and fluids to survive. Sometime after his escape, the UNSC corvette Coral Sea found Alo Sakuba approximately 22,000 kilometers from Installation 05, also known as Delta Halo. He had barely survived his escape and was near death by the time the Coral Sea crew found him. He was taken to the Midnight Facility where he was interrogated by an agent of the Oni intelligence service called Oberon 5. Whilst we know almost nothing about Oberon 5 themselves, we can assume the codename was standard practice for all agents within Oni involved in these kinds of incarcerations and interrogations. Here, Alo Sakuba explained everything that happened on High Charity and the true reason as to why the Covenant limit the use of AIs. This was Oni's and the UNSC's first direct confirmation of the logic plague. Now in 2558, a Spartan from Fireteam Apollo accessed the logs of Denver's interrogation. Apollo was a Spartan 4 fire team that had been involved in operations around Alpha Halo from Halo 1, Etran Harborage, which we can cover in other videos, and were directly involved in conflict with the crew of the Ace of Spades while attempting to recover 343 Guilty Spark for Oni. They were also involved in the apprehension of Gek La, a Sangheili commander under the Reformed Covenant. Gek also ended up at the Midnight Facility, but subsequently escaped. A rarity. As of 2558, Fireteam Apollo was under direct command of Spartan Commander Sarah Palmer, who removed command from the Fireteam leader as soon as Apollo set foot aboard the UNSC Infinity. Which brings us nicely to our second subject. In 2558, Benjamin Giraud was imprisoned at the Midnight Facility after a failed attempt to expose Oni's cover-up of the horrible truth of the Spartan 2 program. Benjamin Giraud, previously known just as The Photographer, was a human civilian journalist and war photographer affiliated with the Office of Naval Intelligence. Ostensibly a civilian working on the public relations of the civilian warthog, he helped alter battle footage to keep the public unaware of how the UNSC was losing the Human Covenant War. 
Giraud was injured during the Prophet of Regret's invasion of New Mombasa and after was part of a small resistance group trying to hold the Covenant back until the UNSC could arrive. Now Giraud recorded and translated an order from an elite to, and I quote, clear this area before we can access the Ark. He was ordered by a marine sergeant to get the recording out of the city to Oni and he was about to board a boat out of the city, but stopped when he saw a young girl crying and no one with her. He calmed her down and handed her his laptop with the recording on it. Supposedly, he asked her to give it to the authorities when she got to the mainland. He himself remained in the city and was last seen observing the Covenant invasion in a room full of displays. After the Human Covenant War had ended, Gerard was employed by Michael Sullivan of the Office of Naval Intelligence, Section 2, to compile an in-depth profile of the now AWOL John 117, who we now know as Master Chief. The idea was to create a patriotic tale of a brave hero and borderline messiah figure. He interviewed a number of people for this purpose. Most of the stories he received from the interviews matched the official records supplied by Oni, except a document from an outer colony that stated that John had died at the age of six, and a testimony that John's parents were still alive by 2528, four years after their date of death, as stated by many other interviewees. Sullivan explained that glass planets typically have erroneous records. However, Benjamin didn't accept Sullivan's explanation and investigated the discrepancy further. Soon after, Benjamin found himself called in for a meeting with Sullivan at Oni's Boston headquarters. Benjamin arrived at the Oni headquarters and discovered that the reason for the meeting was to interview one Franklin Mendez, who was the soldier who trained John. When Benjamin questioned the benevolence of the Spartans, the interview was just cut short and Benjamin was fired and ordered to transfer all of his recorded interviews to Oni. Now for three days, Ben waited, all the while worried that his contacts might have been put down by Oni. And shortly after he received a call from someone who asked to meet up to talk, this person then revealed to Gerard that he had done some of his own independent research and had made a discovery that turned all the misconceptions on their head and that maybe Benjamin Giraud wasn't as insane as they had earlier thought. Giraud went on to a talk show to try and offer the truth but it went horribly wrong. After the talk show incident, Giraud was captured and transported to the midnight facility and incarcerated. The psychological effect led Giraud to cause self-inflicted wounds on his hands and develop a nervous tick of rubbing his head and face raw. It was with this behaviour that Michael Sullivan stepped in to comfort Giraud. Sullivan's goal is to brainwash Giraud into becoming a PR asset for Oni. Now, Maya Sankar, the Oni agent that was known to Giraud, encountered him while awaiting mission reassignment on the facility. Now at first Gerard still believed her to be his contact, but when it became apparent that she was actually an Oni agent, Gerard became traumatised and Sullivan later implied that he had regressed to the damaged psychological state that he was in when he first arrived. So there we have it, two harrowing stories of how Oni use the Midnight Facility. Consider this, the Midnight Facility is never talked about, it's not feared, it's not whispered in hushed tones, not even thought about. No one knows about it except the people who work there and the people who are held there. Isn't that scarier than any prison you might have heard of before? As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, click like and uh, you know leave a comment down below if you want me to cover any of the other subjects within this video. Maybe we can go into more detail on Benjamin Giraud. You let me know. Until next time, take care. Happy gaming.